We want to call our March 14th, 2022 committee meetings to order. Uh, commissioners, if you have not already turned on your mic, we ask that you please do so at this time. At this time, the chair will recognize Chris Cutshaw, vice chairman of the finance committee. Thank you, chairman. In uh, Commissioner DeBoard's absence, he sends his apologies, could not be here tonight, so I'll do my best to fill in for him. Uh, we'll call the Finance Committee meeting to order. Are there any visitors that would like to address the committee? You have five minutes to do so. My name is Linda Noe, Joe Stevens Road have three items at least that I'd like to ask about regarding finances and county buildings. At your last meeting, you authorized the mayor to advertise for real estate consultant services. <clears throat> I haven't seen it. Has that been done? Or is that just another vote you all take and forget it? Mr. Vice Chairman, do you know? Have you seen an advertisement? I have not. Okay. Several months ago, it seems like you were going to take a bid on painting the roof for the Hale House. I don't know, check the county site all the time, but I haven't seen anything in the newspaper about that. Is that another one you just vote? and the mayor does it or doesn't whatever he feels like do you know mr vice chairman no ma'am i don't okay. <clears throat> i think it was december it might have been january there was a discussion about the library and the problems with the gutter and or roof Anybody here know what happened with that? Mr. Vice Chairman of the Finance Committee, do you No, ma'am, I do not. Well, I can tell you what I know. At the last city council meeting, Tony Cox interrupted the work session and said, oh, I have an email from the mayor, Mayor Britton. The insurance is going to pay for most of the repair at the library. Did you know that? You're nodding your head. I did not know that. Okay. And then the remainder, I guess the deductible or whatever the agreement is, will be split between the city and the county. That's been almost two weeks ago. And you all weren't told. Things stop downstairs in the mayor's office. That is very important. And I will tell you, you know, the, can't, the city, the city administrator puts out a weekly report for the city council. If you ever go back and have a rules committee, that is something you should include. Update you, and, and frequently he'll, he'll be talking about the same thing week after week because he's just updating and then you know, maybe it gets done and then he'll announce that. You all don't know what's going on. say that respectfully I, I think you would like to know and some of you may may be on the inside and get a little inside information but I think we've just found out most of you don't know what's going on the last thing I would like to ask is in regard to Miss Green's lawsuit against Mr. Caps for double dipping Do, 
does he still receive the fixed fee from the county for attending finance committee and commission meetings? And secondarily, back in July of 2018, <coughs> you received a letter from Mayor Britton saying that Mr. Capps was going to suspend his billings, his hourly billings for attending finance committee and commission meetings until Ms. Green's, or I, I took it to be until the lawsuit was resolved. My second question, and I wish someone would get this answer. It's your job, you should know this. Do Mr. Capps billings now or for the last year, are there any billings by the hour for attending finance committee and commission meetings? Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to address the finance committee? <clears throat> Seeing none, we'll move into recurring business, <coughs> expenditure reports. Is there a motion to accept? I make motion. No action necessary, my bad. Uh, recurring business and then uh, old business, there is none. We'll go down to new business. Uh, 4A, Justice Center Project, Tony Petty. Uh, uh, did me? we get a second on that? No, Didn't need one. Uh, well, it's uh, 2B. 2B, I'm sorry, so sorry. Need a motion and a second. Accepted, yeah, that's my bad. 2B. Review and acceptance of monthly checks for February 2022. Make a motion. Thank Accept. you. Mr. Doty. Second. Second, Mr. Goins. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. In old business, 3A, there is none. So we'll move to 4. <coughs> Justice Center report from Tony Petty. Good afternoon. Uh, the report is as wet in February. It had about eight or nine inches of rain, but they're staying on schedule. The schedule still shows that. Um, they've got uh, grading down to the uh, building pad sections or the mat slab foundations they've started their soil nail wall uh, if you go by the side you'll see the gun out being spread and the ties being actually the ties being drilled into the soil nail the soil nail wall and they've tested the micro piles uh, they went a little deeper in the test areas than the 45 feet that we've got in the bid but it should average out they were indicated that they'd be a little deeper in the area they did the test the test all passed they're approved submittals are ongoing um, the uh, concrete uh, contractor is uh, got <coughs> submittals in rebar is being fabricated and, and will be delivered to the site but right now for the next month or so you're going to see uh, micro piles and soil nail wall being installed and uh, do you want to go on into 2B? Sure, 4B. Go ahead, Tony, with the uh, gives the, uh, Justice Center change order number one. Please uh, give us detail on that. Okay, so the, the change order number one, it, if you have a copy of that, it's, it, it, you'll see a PCO listing there. And what this architect is going to do is submit these PCOs. And PCO basically stands for potential change order. And eventually we go through that, vet that out, see if it's an issue, see if it's really a change to the documents and the, and the, and the work. And the architect approves it. I kind of sit in on that approval. And um, so the first two items of that are actually credits. Uh, uh, we had an overage of unsuitable allowances. We talked about that some in the, in the last meeting um, where we had overrun those some unsuitables. We had an allowance in the bid. 1,500 yards, and it ran over 1,300 more yards. So uh, that added to the number. But then we had uh, several meetings with a discussion of a soil cement on the Justice Center side, which 
uh, is a layer of um, soil cement, about 18 inches thick. And uh, it was determined that with the layback of the walls and the permanent soil nail wall and the excavation there that we would um, not need that. And the geotechnical engineers recommended that, so we took that credit. So that made that item number one, PCO number one, is a negative number, $28,234. Uh, then there was in the, the brick that was chosen that was in the specification was a, a brick that's going to be used both on the, the Justice Center, which is a full-scale full, full scale brick, masonry unit. And then it's also was having to be faced, taking the face of it and saw it off and put it in a grid for the precast on the, on the uh, Justice Center, on the jail, on the tower. Uh, <coughs> that wasn't going to work very well. This one really got kicked around ever since the contractor got on board. So uh, there was a brick that was submitted that was a PCI approved brick, which means the standards on it would fit in this grid and you wouldn't have the issues with it. It is also able to be made in a thin face and a full brick. The brick cost more, but they didn't have the cost of sawing the brick, the other brick. So the credit ended up being $10,000. To substitute this brick. Uh, PCO number nine is uh, a field change between the structural and the micropile. The structural engineer uh, ended up increasing the areas where the micropile pile caps were and he, he added 241 cubic yards of concrete and uh, this resulted in a change of $109,051. Why do you why do you increase that, Tony? Uh, I think he just he determined that the seismic friction and the loads on the building, he, he felt that he had it. We had three or four meetings asking him if that was necessary and couldn't move him off of it. So uh, it was more loads on it, and, and then we offered a different way of trying to cut the cost, and we couldn't do that either. He, he wanted that at a monolithic bore. He wanted it deeper, and... Um, we didn't know this beforehand? Uh, it's, a, it's an engineering, it's an engineer, uh, structural engineer that did this, so certainly didn't know it, so. We didn't have a structural engineer on the project. Just when you we, did when we were bidding. The construction engineer just reviewed it and it, added the added the concrete. Is it the same structural engineer or different? No, it's the engineer record. E O R. Yeah. Same one it, before the bids let out. Yes. Before we let the bids out, we knew what it was, but now we've got and he increased, 109, he increased the bids one added two hundred and forty one cubic yards of concrete. Was there a specific reason that he saw that we needed more i mean obviously it's for the foundational safety of the whole building but is there is there some discovery that created this no, no he really not a good excuse but uh, he, he added it we uh, approached it two or three different ways of, a, of kind of licking your calf and trying to get it reduced in a more constructible way and he kind of stuck to his gun and said, no, I need to increase it. I need to increase the depth of this thickened area. But well, surely the engineer knew this prior to. He built more than one. He didn't. Well, he, is this the first one he ever did? No, I'm not familiar with the engineers. Oh, okay. It's okay. Experience, so. I mean, I'm very frustrated with it. And, uh -huh these things come up I, I mean I, I I'm, I'm a mechanic if I working on a car as a v8 I wouldn't put six cylinders in uh, six plugs in the car and it's like well later on well we need eight of them you know, it's just, yeah. I do it need an eight right mm -hmm. as our project manager Tony we we appreciate that you that you argued that but it doesn't sit well to start off right away and and find something yeah, and if you notice, there's uh, PCO one, but you also got PCO nine, 
and there's more there's more issues that we're tracking. Right, I got you. That, that uh, and, and and you will typically find most of the unknowns. I'm not making excuses for the engineer. I can't. Yeah. Okay. You, I'm just kind of bringing you up to speed. You'll find most of your uh, surprises uh, will be at the beginning of the job. You're going to find. I'm in here one day talking about a sanitary sewer line that they've discovered that they got to address. Uh, there's another and forthcoming about um, power to the existing jail that's not properly addressed to, to keep them in service. So you'll see some of those coming through. Is there a way you go and come back to us at another time with saying why? Tell us why uh, he didn't know about this beforehand or why we did this now? I, can, I mean, I've already asked him why. I'd, and I was kind of asking. I mean, what's, what's he saying? Why, what's he saying about why are we doing it now? Prior to. I was asking specifically that. I was asking more in frustration than anything about it. So, and basically, are you really sure you want to add 200? You know, when we first started talking about it, we thought it was 260 yards of concrete. With our takeoff. Uh, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I don't care if it's 10,000 yards of concrete. Exactly. I want it to be safe you and I want it to be why. good. I can, I can certainly report back on you on why. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what he told me. Okay. All right, but I'll ask you. Of this, uh, of this cost that we're seeing here, of this change order, is this only material and, and labor? Labor and material. Labor and material. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's obvious that um, they feel like we need it. Um, is there a motion to accept this? I'll make that motion we accept it. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. In new business, 4C. Resolution for Hamlin County 2022 bond resolution. <coughs> Mayor. Also, also just uh, before we leave the topic on, on the change order, uh, the additional, the $70,000 won't increase the budget for the project. We have a contingency of $1.8 in, in the budget. That yes, that's the I think both of us realize we just want to know why, why, is it, why isn't that uh, in there for the beginning, you know, when he first did that. Oh, I, I understand, but I, I, just, I just wanted to be, let you guys know where the money was coming from. And, and so that'll come from the contingency that we have. Um, okay, and um, there's a resolution in your packet, it's a bond resolution. <laughs> that is for the next bond issue for the Justice Center project. Um, it's a $50 million issue, um, and it's, it's part of the, the original plan that I presented in October uh, as far as financing the project, and, and so this is the next one. We've moved it up a little bit time-wise just because of the uncertainty around uh, interest rates. They've been rising. And so we wanted to take advantage of, of uh, well, we didn't want to wait in, in conversations with, with Chris Bessler from Cumberland Securities. If uh, you want to, um, he's here. If you want to question him about it, um, in your, let's see, in your packet. Oh, no, these aren't in your packet. Here's a slide that shows the dark colored, which I uh, wish I'd put in another color are the two issues that we've already done. And that's in January 2020, the 20 million, and then December we did the 10 million. And then we originally had this next 50 million uh, scheduled for June. And uh, the interest rate we received in, uh, in January of 2020 was uh, 2.39 and then 196 in, uh, in December. So uh, those were under what we had budgeted uh, and what we'd presented you guys. And, and then those are our budget amounts. And, and 
uh, interest rates right now or and other costs mm -hmm. associated with with bond issues are kind of all over the place and so Chris can, can explain that but what we want to do is go ahead and do the issue it'll be in April uh, so it'll be a couple of months early and it will be uh, to try to get as low an interest rate as, as we possibly can mayor are we not yes. locked in at these rates already yes well not the dark colored ones yes Okay. Not these other. These are our budget is, numbers. Is there is there any way we can lock them in? These no. It, these were what we put the plan together with. As, they were estimates. Like the three twenty five on the fit is an estimate. So if if it goes up to uh, seven percent, we have to pay seven percent. Yeah, but now that's that, that's not going to happen. I'm not, no, but I'm just saying it used as a sample. But there's no way we can lock it in early. I mean, we could, if you want. I mean, what we could do is issue the whole thing at once and lock in a rate. But that's that, the only way you can lock it in. That's the only way we could lock it in. It, well, I, I don't have a problem with that because if you look at what happened on, uh, it went up. What the, I can't remember what it was. 0.5% or something like that. I can't remember. The, the other day it went up, and it's going to continue to climb. I feel. Well, and that's that's been what's going been going on the last couple of weeks. Right. Yeah, and that's why we're before you. Can we? Can do, we? Do look you at, think? Uh, do you think the risk of doing that is better? I, I mean, going ahead and paying interest now on the whole thing, rather. Than, well, it, it, I hate to do that, but you know, if it's going to save us money in the long run. Right. Yep. Mr. Bessler, could you enlighten us, please? Sure. Mr. Bessler, Cumberland Securities. Um, you know, as the mayor was, was talking about, we were originally looking at doing this next $50 million at the 1st of June. Now we're looking at moving that up about a month and a half, just as, as now the timing can allow that with where rates are, are heading and uncertainty in the global market. So there's been, uh, as the mayor referenced and as Commissioner Goins just said, you know, seeing rate movements of half a percent here going up uh, in some of the treasuries when well, municipals are un undergoing the same uncertainty in the market. And so right now the plan with, that the mayor is putting forth is to go ahead and advance this next $50 million, uh, with everything going on from a world standpoint with the Russia and Ukraine situation. And then also we've got inflation going on here with concerns of stagflation also where you've got high inflation, but your, your growth is, is flat uh, in, in terms of your economy. Um, you know, trying to see if stuff settles by the time we get, get the rating in place on this 50 million and then go to market. Uh, in terms of do you go ahead and do the rest of it? Well, obviously if you do the rest of it, then you're gonna have to pay your debt service on that even though you've not spent that money yet. Right. Now, in, a, in an ideal world, when the interest rates that you pay go up, the interest rates that you receive on your investments should theoretically go up. But that's not going to happen because the banks are overloaded with cash right now, and they have no incentive to pay higher interest. They don't, they don't want any more deposits. So they're trying to figure out how to get rid of their deposits, but they want to do so where they're making good money as well. And so right now what we've seen is that there has been an outflow of cash out of the market. So both from bond investments and also from stocks. Is, that's the one that most people see is the, where the stock market is. And so with that, you have a lot of cash that's just sitting on the sidelines right now waiting to be deployed at some point. So you don't recommend us doing that? Because uh, uh, you got March two, uh, 23 right here. It's already up uh, a quarter percent right there. Point, that's, I know it's a guesstimate. That's, that's just budget rates budget. right there. So rates can go up, they can go down. In terms right. of timing, our, but we our don't know. has never been one to say, let's try to try to really time the market. It's just when you kind of see that rates are going up, you could say it might be better to go ahead and do this, this now. Um, this schedule was put together based upon expected expenditures. But expected uh, expenditures right there are already gone up a quarter percent. Now is it going to go up higher than that? And are we, we're going to. I don't want to sit here and say, "Well, I wish we would have done that," you know? Yeah. Mr. Yeah, Bessler, that's, that's the commission's prerogative to. Right. If you want to, if you want to advance that, you can obviously do that. What, what? Explain to us what would a recession do to us with with the pressures we see in our world around us, and and you know this is just little Hamlin County, but yet it's going to affect us. 
I, I just wonder, do we have any history of how a recession affects interest rates in the short term? I heard you say, you know, the banks are full of cash and they're trying to download it. Is, is that, is there any balance in that? Just the idea of a possible recession? And, and Chris, if you look, they've already started tightening up a little bit. Well, I, I agree with Tim. That we don't want to see the interest rates rise as high, but I, I'm thinking if a recession hits, again, my ignorance probably, but during a recession, they're going to possibly keep them where they're at. Yeah, it's, it's a good question, and it gets harder and harder to answer that because in, in recent history, you've seen the federal government and the Fed, Federal Reserve get involved to such an extent as to try to artificially keep rates low to light, light some fire under the economy. Well, that's all fine when your inflation index is really low like we've had for the last decade plus. But, now but right now when we've got an annualized inflationary inflation rate of around 7 plus percent, it's hard for the Fed to turbocharge that. So they've kind of used up a lot of their ammunition, if you will, in terms of trying to keep an economy afloat instead of just letting the cards fall where they may and picking up from there and, and letting it move forward. So um, in the past, rates do tend to go, go down if there's a recession, but it's hard to say that that'll be the case because we've not had that coupled in recent years with high inflation. With high inflation. Supply mm -hmm. issues that we're all aware of. It's just an unknown. Go ahead. Sorry. What, what's the current rate? Well, it depends on how long you're going out. So right now, we're probably pretty close to this three and a quarter rate. The bond issue that we got to do back in December was what was called bank qualified. So if it's 10 million or under, you, you qualify for basically special treatment. And banks are allowed to bid on that. If it's over 10 million, banks, commercial banks are not allowed to, to buy that and get the uh, advantage on the interest carry from a tax standpoint. And so that, that advantage was very beneficial. Your recommendation, sir? Well, our recommendation would be, um, you know, continue. You've got, you've got to fund this project. You're, you've already started on it, so continue forward with it. Um, right now, there's a lot of turmoil. I mean, a lot of turmoil in the municipal market, in the bond market, and the stock market. I mean, there's a lot of turmoil. Uh, hopefully, this is something that's going to settle down in the next few weeks. It doesn't. These things don't tend to last too long, but. We've got a lot of uncertainty with what's going on from a geopolitical standpoint. A lot of levers are being pulled at, from federal, you know, from co various countries. And so there, we're kind of in new territory right they, now. Look, our leaders are. So if it goes up highly, you don't recommend it right now. So if it goes up real high, we can blame you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like our backs are against the wall to try to make a good decision it's, here. It's, it's, it's a, a no-brainer with the 50 million, we've got to go. But, but yet, you know, like uh, Commissioner Goins is saying about any more. Right. It's, it's hard to know because I can't tell you where rates are going right. to go because I've spent, you know. From but even in your projections, even in your projections here, it looks like it's headed north because it. I always go up higher in my projections the further away it is. Oh, okay. So if you were going to wait until September 23, I'd probably have a 375 on there. I try to go. I try to go high on, 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 on that, so that way, hopefully, we're not going to hit a surprise. So the discussion we need to know, is, the discussion we need to have is, do, do we stay with what's here, or do we consolidate all at once, or? Mr. Bessler, if we had done this, stepped up a month ago, mm -hmm. what projected interest rate do you think we would have gotten a month ago? Um, had you stepped up a month ago, you'd probably be in the market right now, so you'd probably be close to the 325. But right now, there's there's a lot of uncertainty and underwriters are, are putting in. They lost money in January. They lost money in February. Wall Street did, and they're they're not wanting to lose money right now, so they're putting some extra cushion in it right now. So, you know, right now would be a time where I'd say maybe we, we hold off and wait until after the Fed meets this Wednesday and see what kind of direction they get. But they were going to be coming back here and... In we're going to be coming back in September of this year to repeat the process. Yeah. Chris, when we took that 
That's fifty million dollar bond. We didn't know what the rate was going to be when we did that. Although we wasn't going to use it till June, we didn't have any idea what that rate would be. You, um, you haven't actually issued that debt yet. This is to this resolution would be to approve the issuance of that, debt. and then we would go out into the competitive market and solicit bids on the fifty million. We just applied for the bond, but we never did get an issuance on it. No, you didn't apply for it. Even that that initial part was to to go ahead and publish your intent to issue debt at some point, but the commission never approved the yeah. issuance of it. This is the approval. We of we, were, we didn't know what it was going to be, even in if we'd have taken out in June, we didn't have no idea. Uh, correct. You won't you won't know until you go out and bid the bonds, and once they're bid, if if um, you know, for whatever reason. We need to reject the bids. We could still reject the bids. The, there's no assurance on this September or the March the 13th, either. Correct. It could. Who knows? It, it could go up. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, from a from a from a historic perspective, if you're locking in rates at three percent, three and a quarter percent, you're under the historical rate of inflation as well. And so that's also something to keep in mind. The rates that we had on the January 2020 issue, the December issue you know, a few months ago, that's a 2.39% and a 1.96%. That's just unthinkable rates, even as recently as a decade ago, to, to be that low. So right now we're starting to get back into what would be considered more normal territory. If we'd have, if we'd have done this back in December the 21st, if we'd have taken that June deal and went ahead and issued it, we'd sure be money ahead. One no, nine six versus no, three and a quarter. No, you probably would have been closer to about mm -hmm. a two point four or two point five percent. Yeah, it's still down the road. Mm -hmm. But if we'd have issued it at one ninety six You can't do it. You're at ten million dollars or below for one point nine six. The what? You gotta have ten million dollars or below to get to one point nine six. Ten million below. Ten million or below. Had you done it all in December, you would have exceeded that $10 million threshold. We're at the mercy of the market, aren't we? Pretty much, because I just thought the market's going to do. That's what we're going to be doing. But that's with everything. Yeah. Gas. Or Mr. Bessler, is there any benefit uh, at this moment to combining any of those bond issues at, at today? That's a philosophy. It's more of a philosophy issue that the commission wants to take. Do you want to get your risk off the table so you know what your rate is and just pay? And then if rates go down in the future, then, you know, you so uh, be hindsight's it. always 20-20. Sure. And so sure. it's always easy to go yeah. back and say, we should have done this, right. we should have right. done that. I mean, ideally, we would have done. Okay. One other question. So we do this all. first $50 yeah. million dollar bond yeah. issue. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's yeah. next? Yeah. If, if we yeah. see... Yeah. Uh, opportunity to move. What's the difference if we uh, another bond issue and before September? Does that cost our county? Uh, how much does that cost our county to have an uh, an early bond issue after this one? If you move up another one, they know it. It's called my name. Okay. Guys, I think he's gave us our answer to move on the 50 right now and hold tight. Keep an eye on things. So, do we have a motion to move forward? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Thank you. To do what? The 50 million. 50 million. Okay. I'm going to let you pay the 50 million. Is there any more discussion? You pay the 50 million. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Check book, Jeff. Motion passes. Chris, I need your address in case it goes way up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> right down the hall. Okay. Okay. Uh, in new business, item 4D, bid tabulation, construction of new parking area. area. Mayor Britton. In your packet is a... A bid tab for the um, bit building of a parking lot across the street in the vacant lot of the Hale property. Um, 
and the low bid was presented by Summers and Taylors um, for $269,214. Um, in their bid, they also had um, had a couple of, of um, Couple of exceptions. I couldn't come up with that word. A couple of exceptions. One in that 269,000 does not include uh, any cost that uh, they might incur if they uh, uh, find uh, unsuitable soil that wouldn't pack uh, or rock if they run into any rock. So um, uh, that that would be added if they run into any of those. That would be added. It's. Um, so what I would like for us to do, what my recommendation is, that we accept this bid. Uh, it's in line with what we bid the renovation of the house and the development of the parking lot uh, together uh, about a year and a half ago. This, this price is in line a little above uh, what uh, the parking lot was at that time. Um, so we think we have a, a, a good bid here, and but I would like to set the budget for the project at 325000 just to cover any um, cost that might be incurred from soft soil uh, and rock. Uh, we will receive, I talked to Summers and Taylors today, uh, we will receive in uh, their contract a, a unit cost um, per square foot for dirt that has to be replaced, similar to what we're doing with the Justice Center. We have a unit cost there, and then uh, we'll also have a geotechnical uh, firm also verify that the amount of, of dirt they said they, they had to remove and replace was in fact that amount, and then for any rock as well. So uh, that's my recommendation is one, is that we, um, we accept their bid uh, at the 269, understanding that there's these, um, uh, exceptions, and we set a total project budget at 325. This is a complete job with curbing and the uh, landscaping that's involved around the parking lot. Correct. Mayor, let me ask you a question. This old house over here, this old maintenance house, yes. that's over behind it and all that good stuff. What's hold, what's keep other than a few maintenance guys that are in there and stuff like that? What's Stop of tearing that down, and when they do that, have that done also. We have. So we could move the maintenance guys in that house for now, could we not? We could, sure. And, and, and the thing we did, we get it all done, all that way they'll have to come back in, recurb it, and do whatever. We would have to rebid it. Yeah, we, we would have to, to probably rebid it with that addition to the scope. To, yeah, it to might be worth it in the, the long house. run. I mean, we got this big. Can we cap bid to uh, taking the house down and stuff? I mean, it just makes more sense to me. I, ta I talked to Terry about that, and to be honest with you, Tim, I can't remember what he said. I, I know what the what they would like. This is what the maintenance folks would like to happen is that once uh, the Justice Center is done and all the inmates are moved, is their maintenance shop, the, the workhouse, I understand their that. maintenance shop. And I understand that, but this is temporary. Right, right. Could that, uh, I can't remember, could that building possibly be moved? What building? The, oh, oh, the, the workhouse? Been, yeah, no, 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 the maintenance building. Oh. I don't even know. I can't even ever. Don't think so. I don't think it's in condition. I'll be to. I mean, if you could, somebody come in and say, we'll take it, get it out of your way. I mean, I, I haven't paid enough attention to it, to be honest with you. But right. we've, had to, we've had to rebuild the front porch and, yeah. and the back porch. And I don't think it'd be worth yeah. moving, to be honest with you. That's my opinion. But I, you know, sometimes we'll take building. it for it. Uh, that's not going to change the configuration of the new parking lot that much is it 
not that much. You, well, you, you but, but what you got, you, 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 it's going to be cut off here, and it's going to be cut off here, and it's going to be just, let's make it nice the first time. And that way we don't have to spend any more money. Well, that maintenance building's already on the existing parking lot. Is this Summers and Taylor going to affect the existing parking lot at all? No. Well, it's the side of it is. I mean, it'll, it will, I mean, they'll butt up against each other. Right. You know, and there'll be some striping that that's, they're not resurfacing. And then, then when the you take, one like once, it, once it's done, then you take the house down, you well, we should have, now we need to restripe it this way and we need to lay more asphalt down here and patch it up. Just a thought. Have to patch it up, otherwise. It look, it look patched up, yeah. Put a flower bed in there. We could have killed. Great for a couple commission. <laughs> There's not going to be a whole lot of parking space where the old house is, because part of it's got to be used for a walkway, doesn't it? There will be. But do you know how it's going to be routed? Because the fact is, it's going to be there. It's going to be in the way, so we don't know. How, we have no. I mean, we'll do whatever you want us to do. I mean, if it's coming down anyway, eventually. And, I'd like to make a motion that we do that. <clears throat> we need to uh, probably make a... Um, Your motion is that... We go ahead, before we approve this... That before, we reject this bid uh -huh. and rebid it, including... With the house taken down. Or do you want me to... Um, I mean, we can do a change order. We can enter into a contract and... and would that 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 be okay too? I didn't think about that. But. We have okay. a little bit of room if uh, if we do accept the three twenty five budget limit that you've asked. So what about? I can't uh, hear you, Chris. I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm just saying he's asked for three twenty five top budget limit, and you and you've got some help to watch the dirt removal, make sure everything. What, what the the second bid? Let, let's <coughs> let's go back to the bids, and then we can kind of. The second bid was five hundred thousand dollars. So there's a big difference between the two. So we could add, we could issue a change order. Um, you know, enter into a contract, issue a change order for the demolition of the house, and 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 then um, uh, and the paving of that area, and we would still be way under the second bid. And I don't know that we could get it under three twenty-five. I just don't know. We can ask nicely. Sure, sure. <laughs> You've got a basement; it's got to be filled in. Yeah, and that there'll yeah. be some soils there underneath the house that wouldn't uh, we'd have to be removed probably. In the meantime, uh, what are you going to do with the maintenance department? Put them in the hell house. Put them in the hell house for a little while. I okay. think. Okay. So we've got a, a motion on the floor to accept the bid as is and expect change order adding the demolition of the home and redesign the parking is that can, correct yeah look yeah let me go let me talk to him about it yeah okay let me go let me and go does that include that. the 325 or just the the bid amount yeah well, well the with with the exceptions yes you know i'm recommending more than the bid amount well, i understand exceptions. but it was just said that the motion would be to accept the bid right. and i need i think we need to say that it the motion needs to be the 325. Well, that, yeah, that, but we need a change order in there for, for him Did to go back to the say in the motion how we're going to pay for it, what fund? It'll be, it'll be out of general fund fund general balance. Fund. Yeah, okay. fund balance. All right. Are we clear on the motion? The motion, the way I understand it, the motion is to accept the bid up to 325, expecting a change order for the demolition of the home and reconfiguration of the asphalt yeah, prep, connection. Prepping that area for yeah. the... And, and paving it. Paving it. That, that's the way I understand the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Good idea, Tim. <clears throat> All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Anyone opposed? Motion passes. All right, thank you. Item 4E, Hamlin Dock, Hamlin Boat Dock, Dock Police. Mayor 
the um, the owners of the of Hamblin Boat Dock um, are in the process of, of negotiating a sale to to Richie Bear, Mike Boyd, and Richie and Mike are here. Um, they've approached the county about the lease uh, that we have with with the current owners. Um, they're going to owner finance. They want to extend the lease to uh, so it's a 20 year lease. Um, I guess the question is, and and I think. Uh, county attorney will will address it is do do we want to uh, is, issue a new lease do we want to just uh, re uh, um, amend the current lease which we did last time uh, that we had a change of ownership and uh, I'll call on Chris to, to address that issue there are some negatives um positives is doing this in a couple of different ways uh, the lease that we have needs to be uh, amended somewhat uh, before we go about the possibility of assigning it if we do a new lease we lose the original lessees as obligors to pay what was originally agreed to be paid in the original lease I don't know if I said that very well but uh, by assigning the lease we will maintain both the former lessees and the new lessees or the new operators of the dock as obligors to, to pay what was originally to be paid through the original lease. Uh, talking about extending it, we can do that through amendment of, of the lease that we currently have and then assign that. That's, that's what I would um, uh, recommend unless something comes to our attention that makes that uh, change somehow. I've reached out to uh, attorneys who are supposed to be representing uh, both the, the uh, original lessees and the proposed new lessees, and I really haven't gotten any information from when, either when's of the, them. When's the lease up now, Chris? Um, I believe the lease runs. That's a that's a hard one. I got to pull up my glasses. Up. <laughs> December. Um, December I handed that 31st. out what? a year. It's a, a twenty-three for thirty-first, twenty thirty. Yeah. So yeah, we've we've got a good long time left, and if they want to extend it to, to enable their financing, uh, we can do that. Oh, we can really raise them up right now, high. Well, <laughs> there, there's there's some things that we haven't completely. Uh, complied with in the old lease we want to we want to fix that uh, in terms of adjusting the rent each five every five years that has kind of gone by a little bit that needs it needs to be addressed so we need to get we need to get the current rent up to what it is supposed to be as opposed to what it is for one thing I've got a little concern that there's a uh, trailer on this site there it is now could we not work where somebody would move that thing because it's a health hazard and an eyesore well that trailer was allowed in the original lease um, but that doesn't mean that it has to be allowed going forward and that's could be very well part of what we talk I about. think it should be uh, we we need a statement in the lease that it be removed by somebody. The future operators are going to remove it. They're going to remove it. Yeah, they're okay. plan, they're planning. You're going to put that in writing in the lease. I'm going to address that in one other issue. We'll okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? Mayor, is this re, um, action? No. no. Just to let you know that we're working, that the attorneys are working on it. We want to let you know what's going on with it. And that will be back. And you'll get it. You guys will be the deciders. Yes, sir. Get to look at it in plenty of time to, to make the decision and get it done for the summer. Okay. Thank you. Trailer uh, that that is they do own it, and so um, the new owners will will own it, and their plan is to remove it, and then uh, replace it with with another structure that uh, a livable structure, and they'll go through the planning department and get the 
the permits and everything that's required. Is it, so. do, they, do we get paid at the campsite there or our trailer no. site there? Or is it, it's, it's private property. It's, I think it was originally put there for a groundskeeper to live in years ago. Or that's that was. That I think a boat dock right owner. They have security guards. Yeah. So, so are we? Is that going to be like a site that we can rent out, or? No, it'll be there. It'll be their site. It'll be their site. Leasing that that. That's that included property. into the uh, yes. lease. Yes. Okay. Mayor, what about the um, the part of the boat dock that's dilapidated so bad? You guys want to address that? The part of the boat dock that. <clears throat> yes, I mean that's basically no, sinking. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, sir. Very <clears throat> problem today. Sorry about that. Um, B dock is the one that's broke off, and they've. They had the previous guys that ran it had pulled it around to the side over here and tied it to the trees. Uh, we're going to remove that and get it took care of. Possibly remove B dock all of, completely and re refurbish it and put a new dock in right there. So, you know, we'll have hopefully within the first couple of months when we take over, that'll be done. That'll all be cleaned up. It won't be an eyesore no more. It'll take a little while to get the trailer out of there as well. But that's that's our first project is try to get that stuff took care of well, do you have to go through tva for any of that stuff uh not that i'm aware of that'll be a welcome sight to see that yeah yeah we've got our work cut out for us to, right. to clean right. that place up but that's that's what we want to do is make it fun again make it uh generate income you know make it a, a, a nice place thank you sir thank you. any other questions for him just one more one more topic on on the dock go to the next picture all right, this is, this is the parking area that's across the street from where you go down the steps to the dock. And what we talked about when we had our meeting last week was um, uh, the new operators want to expand that parking area. So is there another picture or is that the only one? That's the only one. Um, along, that, uh, along that area, all the way down, if, if, if you're looking, let's say the, you're looking down the road and the boat dock's on your right, and you're looking all the way down to where the boat ramp is. And there's this parking lot on your left, or the parking area. I wouldn't call it a lot, but it's a parking area. Is Their, their desire is to um, expand that parking area um, down, down that side of the street, in, uh, which they would have to fan the bank, back, cut the bank and fan it back, and at their cost. And um, it would be a, a wood uh, a gravel parking area, which we would look at in future parks grants that we, we would receive, look at paving it. But um, what we've talked to them about is developing that parking area at their cost. And, but we would need your permission to uh, do the work on the county property, on the park property, as far as feathering back the, the slope where it would be cut. Um, well, my understanding on this area here where, where that pine tree is, I thought we were going to go up there and have build in more campsites up there. No, that's that's on around. That's on around? Okay, yeah, okay. Around. Any other discussion? I, I, I would like a, a, a decision on that so they would know or a recommendation on that, whether they would know they could go ahead and do that or not. I'll make that motion that we let them do that. Second that motion. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Here, Mr. Chairman, just before you get to, to the budget amendments, let me just address some of the issues Ms. Noy talked about. The real estate service RFQ went out last week. So we hopped right on it as soon as, uh, as you guys made that decision. Painting in the wintertime is kind of hard, especially when it's outdoors on a roof. So we'll uh, issue the RFP for the roof painting in another month or so. The library guttering is being worked on right now as we speak. Um, we had a, a, a bid submitted or a quote submitted that was under $10,000. 
So we had the three, um, the three quotes required uh, without bidding it, and the um, insurance company's premium paid for most of the repairs. I think there's going to be about $2,500 that'll have to be paid uh, by the library, shared by the city. So you appropriated 5,300. It's going to cost us 12 to 1,500 in that neighborhood. I didn't think you guys would be too disappointed us saving some money. So sure. those are the those are the updates. Thank, Thank you, sir. On to four F budget amendments. Come on up, Tracy. Number County Board of Education budget amendment number five, increase of ninety two thousand nine hundred twenty one and forty four cents. Good evening. This amendment represents almost ninety three thousand dollars in additional pre K grant funding that the state has made available to our district. And this grant funding would allow us to locate an additional pre K classroom at Fairview Marguerite Elementary. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Motion to approve. Second. I mean, is there a second? Second. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Ayes have. It. Thank you. You're welcome. Item 4F2, Fund 101, Other Facilities and Maintenance, $2,255. Ms. Hurst. This just moved some money around that was appropriated for HVAC units into the account and the maintenance uh, department where some of the HVAC expenses were actually uh, <coughs> expended. This kind of just helps match that up. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Question? Yes. Uh, do you know what HVAC we're talking about? I'm sorry. But you know what HVAC you're talking about? It was at the out of the jail, office. I mean, excuse me. Out of the maintenance budget, we replaced a unit at the satellite office. Yeah, yeah it shocked my memory. Thank you. I had to had to think. Yeah. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Ayes have it. Item 4F3, Fund 101, Other Public Safety and Homeland Security Grant, $22,000. Uh, as the EMA has received an executed contract for the 2021 Homeland Security Grant, and this just adds uh, funds both to the revenue side and to the expenditures. Motion to approve. Motion. Can we have a second? I'll second it. I'll lay an one. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Ayes have it. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Hurst. Chairman, that's all we have. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Cut Shaw, at this time, the chair will recognize uh, Chairman Tim Goins of the Public Service Committee. Thank you, Chairman. I call the Public Service Committee to order. Uh, any visitors wish to address the committee? Seeing none. Uh, new business. Resolution to adopt the various international codes planning department. Tina? Before you be the resolution from the planning office for the permits and inspections department. This is for the adoption of the 2018 building codes. This is a mandatory adoption to make sure that we're in compliance with the Tennessee Department of Commerce and Insurance. Um, the planning commission did approve the adoption of the code at their February 7th, 2020 planning commission meeting. 
questions. There were no changes to the swimming pool and spa code because I didn't see nothing. I would have to turn that over to Daryl. He'll have to explain any changes as a building code. Um, Added an appendix for the swimming pool. That appendix wasn't in the 2012. So they just took a lot of verbiage out of the 2012 and put it in the appendix. So there's really no change as far as the code goes. That I'm so we've not had any code changes basically last year, correct? Uh, not last year. Mm. The last mm. Say something about a pool. The pool. Swimming pool and spa codes to this one. That's what Daryl was talking about. What does that consist of? They just kind of took it out of the 2012. Is that where you're going to enforce swimming pools that don't have a fence around them? Well, we we do that now. Do it. You do it now. Any other questions? You know, I hate to complain, <laughs> but uh, we were sort of have been at, at a disadvantage going through here simply because we don't have a copy, the original copy, and the changes are being recommended that we delete this and replace it with something else. Well, we here don't have a copy of the original document, so that which is at a little bit of a disadvantage uh, uh, and it makes me uncomfortable trying to deal with it uh, because these codes can get rather uh, contentious with some people especially and, and then uh, let me go back on the violation section are those violations uh, similar to what we have now as far as uh, the fines are, it's basically the same? Okay, thank you. It's just small changes in the code, and Daryl brought the code book. I don't know if we could list everything possibly that was changing from one edition to the next edition. Okay, I've got one other question, and this question was asked me by a, a engineer not too long ago. Nowhere in these, in this code right now do we have any requirements for a sprinkler system in residences? Now, that's one of the things, the changes you're, you're referring to there, where you delete a section that is one of the sections. It will be deleted. Okay, because I understand that will be a nightmare if we pass it. So, okay. All right. I'm taking your word for it. <laughs> from the 2012 adoption because the book itself most of the verbiage is the same except the area of the fire sprinklers is one of the great examples that we added that chose okay okay thank you Darrell is there um, have you had any feedback from some of the builders in town about these upcoming changes have you had any feedback from them anybody I'm sure they're aware it's coming or they think it is okay I got you yeah Okay. 
Real quick, is this going to affect any existing property right now, anything that's already built? Is this going to change any penalties or, or imply restrictions on people, what they've already got? Even demolition. We do the demolition, but I don't know if there was any changes. I I just noticed you were you used the word demolition here. Okay. Anything else? I make a motion to adopt. Got a motion? Let's have a second. 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 All in favor? Make a motion for saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Item 4B, election campaigning and county property. Chris? I've handed out uh, to you all uh, an email received um, from CTAS relative to campaigning in um, public buildings and particularly the courthouse, so that's what we have been asked about. Um, the trend is actually less restrictive in terms of freedom of speech than more restrictive um, and if you'll see there in the first paragraph of that email uh, it refers to uh, a county official having a particular policy about campaigning uh, about their employees campaigning um, no no that people are not supposed to be paid for campaigning while they're doing a job for the county. They're, they're not supposed to be doing that. But having said that, I also want to address the, the quote, Little Hatch Act, which has to do with state employees and state buildings, which I think was um, errantly uh, referred to as prohibiting campaigning in this courthouse. Uh, I don't believe that it applied, in fact, I. I in no way does it apply to this courthouse. Um, I think it would be advisable for this body to uh, not attempt to restrict campaign materials in the courthouse. I think this body could pass a resolution that says that they would like to have that particular or those particular materials in a certain area where the public could have access by uh, posting something on a bulletin board, leaving campaign materials in a certain area. Uh, that has been suggested, but in terms of outright making a an ordinance that is more restrictive than state law, I think we will run afoul of uh, both both state and federal uh, constitutional problems. So that is what I have learned. Are any questions about that? I know that there's been a complaint about uh, employee handing out material. Well, if you look in that email, uh, as long as they, as long as that officer or that office holder has a policy that doesn't restrict that, then it appears to be something that is um, not restrictable, certainly by this body. Be restricted by the office holder themselves. Uh, now, are they being paid uh, to campaign? Is, is that, does it constitute being paid to campaign? I, I don't know. I think this body could also pass um, a resolution that discourages uh, county office holders uh, from having personnel campaign while they're working. Uh, does that have the force of law uh, that you discourage it? I don't think so, but at least you will have you will have taken uh, you know some action on this. So. So we discourage it here. If you get up at that mic, say, "Hey, I'm running for county commission." We can't do that here. That's a set. I think that's a separate issue, uh, Commissioner Goins. I think we're talking primarily about uh, campaign materials appearing um, in the courthouse, places that you would not ordinarily think of uh, campaign, campaign materials appearing. Campaign materials being handed out by by an employee of an office. I see. Uh, it looks like, unfortunately, uh, as much as we 
some some might want to restrict that activity my my understanding and belief after researching it and getting with CTAS is that we would not be wise to attempt <coughs> restriction so basically just leave it the way it is and, and I think it would not be wise for us to be seen to be either accommodating someone or helping someone or trying to punish someone that's running for <coughs> office I don't think we want to hinder we want everybody to be on the same footing I think I could be wrong about that I may, uh, I may misjudge that, but I think, I think, partly, what this email has to say is that as long as people are on an equal footing, uh, it's going to be okay, and that's what we want to encourage. But we don't want to encourage the um, restriction of the First Amendment right to campaign and free speech. So that's. You know, I'll leave it up to, to you folks to, you know, fashion something that you think is appropriate. The idea that you have an area in the courthouse that is designated for public materials, uh, for business cards, for uh, any type of um, campaign material, that that be the place as opposed to a particular office or a particular location other than maybe a, a bulletin board. At one point in time, we had a bulletin board where we posted uh, public notices. I don't think it's really used for that much anymore. But um, it could be, and that could that area could be somewhere else in the courthouse. It would be, I think that would not be a bad idea if, if this body wanted to think about that. All right, thank you. Chairman, is, do we need a, need a motion on this? I don't think we should have a motion unless we re we need uh, you could be referred to uh, a committee for further study. Yeah, if there's anything that you want us to, I mean, the county attorney's done the research, and uh, we do have for some public notice material we have a bulletin board in the breezeway. There's bulletin boards in this building. Um, I mean, we could set aside put a small table set aside where the candidates could put their pamphlets or whatever if, if you guys chose to do that or uh, I would rather this is just from a practical standpoint I would rather something like that be encouraged rather than you know there's candidates all over county buildings you know, I make right. well, I can't make the motion but I, I agree with that if you I think if you just he's reported it yeah, we have no recommendation. Well, yeah, we'll be good. <clears throat> yeah, leave it. I, as I think it's a little late in the game to enforce anything right now, uh, but moving forward, I think we could, you know, have some more discussion and. Right. Okay. That, and that, Commissioner Moore, I think that's part of the recommendation as well. That it's too late in the game to attempt to do anything that has any real substance. Uh, at this point in time because we'd be seen to be punishing someone or accommodating someone. And that that's a recommendation as well. That after this next election, that if you choose to do something of any substance, that that would be the time to do it. Well, in that case, Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you, uh, Chairman Goins. At this time, the Chair will uh, recognize Chairman Stepp of the Calendar and Rules Committee. Thank you, Chairman. Call to order the Calendar and Rules Committee. Any individual who wishes to address the committee you may do so at this time. Excuse me. Edna Green, 4981 Cameron Road. Let me first thank you for addressing freedom of speech. That's a valuable asset for each and every one of us. Some of you fought brilliantly for that. And I recognize Mr. Ward for that. And I appreciate you fighting for my freedom, sir. I was one of the ladies that was targeted on 9-13-21 to sue citizens wearing a small piece of foam on their shirts. I want to know if the 9-13-21 vote was valid to authorize a lawsuit. If it wasn't valid, I'd like to see it rescinded so that I don't have to be worried 
over a piece of foam that was on my shirt. Green, is that on the agenda? Yeah, Mr. just a minute. Is that on Mrs. the agenda? Calendar Mr. rules, sir. Give me a minute, please. Show me that level of respect, please. It's not a part of the agenda. I know it's not a part of the agenda. But you won't have another opportunity for me to ask you to do this. At the you end of the commission this. meeting on that Thursday you meeting, you did again. this. And in all fairness, since we're going to check with Chris to see if that vote was valid for a lawsuit, I'd like to know if you're going to push a lawsuit so that I can be prepared or if I have to fear being pulled over and taken to jail. And that's a very valid concern. I'm an old lady. Mr. Green, that's not on the agenda, so I ask you to move I on, I know please. it's not on the agenda, sir. I ask you to move I'd on, I'd like please. to see you put it on the agenda, sir. That's what this is for, right? Nope. Thank you. Anyone else want to wish to address the committee? <clears throat> no, it's Joe Stevens Road. I'd like to say Chris is absolutely correct about the Little Hatch Act as the state facilities and state buildings, not county buildings. But at the same time, I think you're still opening up a Pandora's box. And it, it's so ironic to hear all this discussion of, about freedom of speech when we have what Ms. Green just mentioned, a piece of foam. And what I am getting at, Mr. Stepp, I would like to see several things put on the agenda for your commission meeting. One would be to either announce that the vote was valid on the foam and let us know that you do intend to file suit. Or let us know that just, the no, vote I don't think that's not. on the agenda either, but I don't, uh, we're just discussing what's on the agenda on, here now. I want a, this added to the agenda, Finance Committee agenda, for the 24th. Or announce that the vote was not valid and rescind what you did. It's as simple as that. I'd also like you to do the same thing, putting it on the Finance Committee agenda for the 24th. To let Green, us know. You, don't need, you don't need to go to your commissioner in your district and ask that from your commissioner of that district. That'll be something you'll need to go up with your commissioner. What does she have to do with, can she put it on the calendar? That would be something you'll need to ask her can to do. Can she put it on the calendar? That's what I want. That would be something you'll need I to want. ask her to do. Mr. I'm not going to this sit is here not on the agenda. With you. I'm not going to argue I'm either. Go, going right the on. The matter is that on what you're discussing point. is not on the agenda right now, Mr. Noe. Uh, uh, you have already said before it can be about to to adding something to the agenda. That. Chairman, Chairman Stepp, she she is in order. Uh, she is in she in is. order in recommending clock, that something be added to the agenda. Okay. So ahead, she she can do that. I know I can. <laughs> so I'd like to see that put on the agenda as well. Let us know about both of those, or the foam lawsuit and Mr. Goins' lawsuit, or his motion where he asked for a declaratory judgment as to whether a constable or a deputy can remove a person or persons from meetings who are violating the rules of the body. Was that a valid vote? And if it was, are you going to proceed? If it was not, then it needs to be rescinded. And by the way, if that is a, if you do bring a lawsuit on a deputy or constable being able to remove somebody for violating the rules of the commission, I hope that same sheriff, deputy, constable, will remove every one of you when you violate the rules of the body as you did on the 20 on the at the last meeting when you voted on a contract in violation of the 10-day rule it works both ways folks finally since um, mr Britton is opening up and answering a few things i'd like to know if the health department contract has been signed that you all authorized on the 24th. 
Does anybody here know? Probably not. Thanks. Ann Horner, 1535 Panther Creek Road. I would just like to see uh, one thing added to the agenda or a committee formed to discuss training each head of each committee as to what their job is. Appreciate this. Anyone else? Wendelin Holden. I want to talk about uh, the Planning Commission. It's a joke. You make rules, regulations, you have code enforcer that you just hired, pay him a good salary, give him good benefits, shake your head out you want to, Mr. Step, it's all right. I'm still going to talk. <laughs> anyway, they don't even enforce what they've got. They got codes that they don't, they don't even enforce. You get your Cherokee Park cleaned up. I'm glad you did. There, there's other areas in this town that need it too, not just Cherokee Park. Anyone else? If not, under 3A, under old business, we have none. 4A, under new business review of regular calendar items, do I have a form of motion or do I have so moved? Motion to have a second. Mr. Chairman, I think we need to add, <coughs> excuse me, under 6D, the construction new parking area with the addition of the, of the change order. Need to add that in, please. Sir, Mr. Doden, read the calendar items with the addition of 6E on the parking lot. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All approved, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Under 4B, review <coughs> of consent calendar items. We have a motion. We need a motion to approve the regular calendar with this change. We've already, or, or did, or was this uh, motion? I'm, I made a motion, but there was never a second. Oh, well, I'll he, second. He added, because Doty added, Commissioner Doty added yeah. the 6B between the votes. I just added in the, the purchase change that we okay. added. Sorry. The change order. Yeah. Okay, under 4B, the consent counter, I will. I think you still, like he said, need a second, second on, on the 4A. 4A. <coughs> I'll second it then. Amen. I have Thomas. Who had a second? Doty. Doty. No. A and then the change. Mm -hmm. Now say all in favor. Thomas Doty and Tim Parker. Right. Yeah. There was all he added to it, and then now you go back and approve that counter with his addition. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, approval of the regular calendar items with the addition of 6A and 4. Do I have a motion? We got that. Got a motion. Have a second. 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 Noted. Any discussion? Any discussion? All approved say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Under 4B, <coughs> consent calendar items. Do I have a motion? So moved. And Horner, do I have a second? Second. Second by Doty, any discussion? All approved say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you, Chairman Stepp. Uh, I've got a couple announcements to make before we adjourn. First of all, I want to remind the commissioners to please leave your notebooks. You can drop them off in the basket over there. That'll help Trish out in getting them ready for us for the 24th meeting. Mark Pittman, fire chief with the West Hamlin County Fire Department, will have the new fire truck recently purchased here at the courthouse for you to see at the commission meeting March the 24th. They will be at the courthouse around 3.30. He will park across the street. You want to see the new fire truck. 
We stand adjourned.